A cool horror is back and it's bigger and more terrifying than ever before. Because as it may seem, we'll never truly know how deeply seeded the twisted influence of the occult runs through horror fiction and fandom. I'm just kidding, but it's interesting because there's nothing quite like a horror movie that correctly handles the occult, an exploration of the hidden facets of the human condition, of the ancient and the forbidden. For horror cinema in particular, correctly portraying occultism is a difficult task to do, and out of all of our specific list videos that we've revisited for part two, this one is perhaps the most difficult. So. Let's see what we can do. Hello horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the Scary Channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finches. Today, we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Occult Horror Movies, Part 2. Roll the clip. And may all my transgressions be washed. And make me chaste and pure. Further curious amongst you, that clip was from 2016's A Dark Song, an absolutely fantastic British movie starring the awesome Steve Oram alongside Catherine Walker that happened to find itself as our part two spot on the previous part of this list. But it's so damn good that it deserved to take the honorable spot of today's role, the clip. So yeah, there you go. There you have it. And there will be many, many entries that deserve their recognition of horror movies that deal with the occult, many of which I know you'll have an opinion of. So let us know your picks down in the comment section below. On with the show. Kicking off at number five, Starry Eyes, 2014. Hello, Sarah. We'd like to see you again. And Sarah, this will be different. And I'd just like to begin with the fact that this film is hella messed up. It is incredibly, incredibly violent. And for an independent movie that was pretty much funded through Kickstarter, it contains some of the most truly shocking visual effects I've seen in a while. Also, not only that, but 2014's Starry Eyes handles some pretty acute themes, many of which cut very close to the bone, and many of which pose the question as to why this film had to be created by independent studios, as it critically handles the vast conspiracy and occultism often lauded with Hollywood. And in many ways, is reminiscent of the themes handled in Stanley Kubrick's 1999 classic eyes wide shut. Now we've got all of that out of the way though, this film is just a straight up great horror movie and although it has its flaws start to finish, it portrays occultism with an air of modernity. Co-written and directed by Kevin Kolsch and Dennis Widmeyer, Starry Eyes tells the tale of Sarah Walker, played by the awesome Alexandra Esso and whose performance in this film is something to behold, as an aspiring actress who's stuck in a dead end job at a fast food restaurant in Hollywood, but who of course quickly finds herself along a much more sinister path. After taking a casting call with a prestigious studio for a mysterious film known only as The Silver Scream, Sarah quickly catches the eye of a strange casting director and her willingness to completely transform for any given role reveals the price that she has to truly pay. To be honest, there's not too much to spoil with this film because you can guess the premise from the first few scenes, but nevertheless, it's in the gradual reveal of the true extent of the price that Sarah pays for fame where horror truly lies. And saying that, the final moments of this film are truly, truly shocking and weird. This film is gross, it's violent and Bleak. It's got a secret Hollywood cult pulling the strings for young actors, and as far as occultism goes, it paints the bleakest of bleak pictures. Coming in at number four, The House of the Devil, 2009. And whilst one thing does indeed lead to another, and whilst we've also covered this film before on Top 5 Scary Videos, there's no denying the fact that when it comes to occult horror, The House of the Devil is a rightful contender for the top spot. So much so that the next four films on this list are so neck and neck that you could almost consider this spot number two. So, there you have it. Without beating about the bush, The House of the Devil is a fantastic horror film. And as far as genre filmmaking goes, it manages to so accurately create a sense of time and place that it's easy to slip through the cracks of this film. And that time and place in particular is the 1980s and a suburban America gripped in the midst of the satanic panic. And oh boy, is this film the definition of satanic panic. Written and directed by the awesome Ty West, the filmmaker behind 2011's The Innkeepers, as well as Your Next, which are both incredible horror movies in their own right. The House of the Devil tells the tale of Samantha Hughes, played by Jocelyn Donahue, a college student in the 1980s who takes up a babysitting job at an old house in the countryside owned by the Ullmans, an initially unassuming family that are hiding more than just skeletons in their closet. Now, I don't want to say anything else about the plot, because for those that haven't seen this film, it's very much a classic haunted house tale, and whose true terror lies in the discovery of what lurks behind every corridor. But again, in classic occult fashion, the third act of this film 
is the definition of a cult horror. Now listen, although this film is far from perfect and it draws on many tropes already explored in classic 1980s horror, for the sum of its parts The House of the Devil is start to finish horror entertainment. And I'd even go as far as to say this is one of the best occult horrors of the last decade. Next up at number 3, Haxon, 1922. This film was made in 1922. And horror list aside, we should all appreciate how astonishing it is to bear witness to an art form that has lasted for so long, whilst also being living evidence of the things that a creative team of human beings can do, despite their technological limitations. During a time where these particular methods of narrative devices weren't even in the cultural ideologue. Big words, I know, but this film is a big freaking deal. And when it comes to occultism and horror cinema, this film literally wrote the book. But it was based on another book, a book that spawned the craze of demonology that has proliferated its way through the ages. The Malleus Maleficarum, the 15th century demon hunter's handbook, and in many ways Haxan is a visual depiction of the many bizarre mysteries and cultural superstitions that it spawned. And in many other ways, this film is the definition of occultism in the visual form. Written and directed by Benjamin Christensen, Haxon, also known as the Witches or Witchcraft Through the Ages, at the same time, it was the most expensive Scandinavian film ever made. And for what is essentially a horror movie based on a medieval textbook, that's a pretty big deal. Told in four distinct parts, Haxon seeks to discover the origin of witchcraft and the true meaning behind the many demons and destructive entities that have found their place in folklore. In one manner, this film is an essay, and in others, it's a visual tapestry of what role superstition and and demonology in particular played in European cultural history. Listen, this is a silent film. It was made in 1922 and it will not be for everybody. But the bones that it laid down for horror cinema as a whole and the depiction of occultism and forbidden knowledge behind the silver screen are incredibly important and they're the ones we should be cherishing. Also, stylistically, this film is a wonder to behold. It's equal parts historical artifact as it is a work of horror. There is nothing quite like it and there definitely won't be another like it. Unless we go back in time, but yeah. <laughs> That's a different story. Swinging in at number two, Kill List, 2011. They're well earned. Good. Necessary. Oh. All right. How do you get what is for the most part a British gangster movie that then somehow manages to turn itself into one of the most glaring and visceral occult horrors of recent memory? You have to be Ben Wheatley. That's how. I went into this film not knowing anything about it, and it was my first brush with the incredibly talented British filmmaker Ben Wheatley, and the fact that ultimately I finally realised it was a horror film at the end rather than a straight up crime thriller made things quite confusing on first viewing. But then you watch this film back again, with that same thought in mind and all of the unexplored mysteries of the occult, cultism in general, homogeneity, the breakdown of the social contract, conspiracy, shady old dudes in smoky rooms, and then suddenly 2011's Kill List truly becomes terrifying. And do you know why? Because no matter how many times you watch this film, there are no answers. And the definition of occultism is hidden knowledge. You see where I'm going with this? Written and directed by Ben Wheatley, Kill List tells the tale of Jay, played by the staggeringly talented Neil Maskell, alongside his partner Gal, also played by the fantastic Michael Smiley, two former soldiers who took up a career as hitmen ever since leaving the military, whilst Jay is haunted by the disaster of a mysterious mission gone wrong in Kiev. Strangely though, the pair happened upon a mysterious job introduced to him by Gal's new girlfriend, a human resources manager of all people. Sounds fishy already, right? Well, yeah, I'll say no more, because although I said previously that this film has very few answers, understanding the points that get us there as an audience is part of the deeply disturbing mystery. This film unravels like the bandage of an infected wound. There's something really off about it the whole way through, and despite the boisterous and often comedic performances of Maskell and Smiley, their swagger only serves to make the ultimate resolution of this film far more terrifying. Yeah, kill this, guys. As far as the court horror movies go, this is Definitely one of the best. And finally, coming in at our number one spot, Hereditary, 2018. And boy, where do we even begin? You just knew that this one was going to rear its ugly, payment ridden head sooner or later, and many of you found umbrage with the fact that it didn't appear on our part one of this list, but come on, there's a lot to get through when it comes to occult horror, okay? Give me a break. And we've got a few demonic overlords to crown 
in the meantime. Nevertheless, there is only one occult horror film of the 21st century that rightfully deserves its place at the top spot, and it is Hereditary. Also, as a little sidebar, Ari Aster's other occult show supper, Midsummer, perhaps deserves its place up here, but we'll let the dust settle first before we give that one a proper once over. For all intents and purposes, the meat and bones of 2018's Hereditary are horror incarnate. The reason this film is touted as one of the scariest films of an entire generation is because it is. Hereditary is terrifying, it's disturbing, it contains some of the greatest performances in the whole of horror cinema, particularly with the extraordinary Tony Collette and the young Alex Wolfe. And occult aside, this film is the true meaning of fear. And then we can talk about the occult angle of this film, because again, part for part, there are few other films that breach the topic as deftly and as comprehensively as Hereditary. For all intents and purposes, this film is about a demon. And in a genre oversaturated by demonic possession movies, unexplored crypts or paranormal investigators, Hereditary manages to blow all of those films of that ilk completely out of the water effortlessly. And as far as demonology goes and of shadowy malevolent cults, this film is the most convincing out of all of them. I'm not even exactly sure why that is, but it is. Part of it is in the writing, part of it is in Ari Aster's unique view of what horror actually is, but the majority of it is in what we're not shown. It's in the implication of a family gripped by a force far out of their control. Yeah, I don't need to say much more. Occult horror, hereditary. They go together like a cult in a treehouse. Well, there we have it, horror fans. Our list for the top five scariest occult horror movies, part two. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree? Have any more to add to this list? Let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any choice picks of your own. Before we depart from today's video, though, if you'd like to continue on with your horror recommendation binge, then please feel free to hit that neatly compiled playlist floating conveniently to the side. Unfortunately, that's what we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll see you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You'll be watching top five scary videos. Videos. And until next time, you take it easy.